So maybe you're curious about trying watercolor and maybe you already have the supplies ready to go. Or maybe you've been painting for a while. Either way, you are susceptible to a devious little habit I call creative procrastination. Yep, it's essentially the many excuses we find not to start painting, not to try that new palette or idea we have. It's insidious, and if we're not careful, our creative procrastination can lead to long dry spells, or dare I say, never getting started in the first place. And I don't want that for you. What's the first step? Recognizing we have a problem. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna take a look at the different types of creative procrastinator. You're probably gonna fall into one of these categories. I know I fall into at least two. Yep, that's right. Creative excuses not to start painting aren't just for beginners. Hopefully you have a little comfort in knowing that. All right, let's get into it. First up, we have the organizer. She has a lot of supplies, or maybe she's just starting out, but she is organizing your area, the desk, the place where she's gonna create. All the supplies need to be in their perfect place before any creating can actually happen. You've never seen such perfectly straight tubes of paint and brushes so impeccably cleaned and stored ready to go. Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Some of us tell this lie that we can't actually start creating until our space and our supplies are perfectly prepared and ready to go. And friends, I'm here to tell you that is a masterful creative procrastination technique because honestly, it makes sense, kind of. You think you have to have everything perfectly ready to go, but I'm here to tell you, if you let this habit get out of control, you're just gonna be stuck in a loop of always preparing and never actually doing. Now, please don't go anywhere. You probably think I'm getting a little spicy and I'm chastising you. I certainly am not. I just get really passionate about making sure you do whatever you gotta do to actually put brush to paper more often than not. Number two, we have the swatcher. You know who you are. You have a decent amount of supplies or you often pick up new supplies and you spend a ton of time making those tiny little boxes of color over and over again. And you essentially spend a lot of time organizing, labeling your swatches of colors and you do them over and over again and you do different mixing charts and all the things. But you never quite get to the actual part where you paint a picture, you paint a flower, you paint a scene. You know what I'm talking about. Swatching is all fine and good. I'm actually gonna link a bunch of videos below about swatching. But when you get stuck in the swatching loop as a way of avoiding or as a way of dealing with your fear about creating actual art, that's when it becomes a habit you need to take a look at. Next up, we have the collector. And you know what, the collector is closely related to the swatcher. I am definitely the collector. I love to buy art supplies. I've been this way for most of my adult life. And it's just something that gives me joy. I will buy the supplies, I will play around with them, I'll organize them, I'll compare them to other supplies. I will do all the things, I will swatch, I will, yeah. But do I actually make art with the new supplies that I've picked up, the new brushes, the new kind of inks, whatever it may be? Not as much as I'd like because I am just so caught in the creative loop of collecting and looking at things and swatching that I forget to kind of evolve from that point. I want you to evolve. All right, I gotta stop right here. Have you figured out, are you an organizer, a swatcher, maybe a collector? There is one more personality type I wanna go over, but I gotta know, these are the three most common. Do you fall into any of these categories? Just admit it here, get it off your chest, we're here for you. While you're at it, if you feel like this video is making you laugh, you just feel seen, could you go ahead and give this video a boop? That's a like, because honestly, friends, I'm gonna share a little secret milestone with you. I I have never shared this on this channel before, but I am getting really close to 100,000 subscribers. I can't even believe that number. And I've got this little like game going with myself that I'd love to by the end of this year. And if you're watching this in 2023 or beyond, it's the end of 2022. And I would love to get to 100,000 by the time we are in 2023. It's a big goal, but you know, your boop, your like on this channel, your comments actually really help me 
get closer to that goal and I am so appreciative. Last but not least, we've got the planner. And I also can fall into this category, but I've actually done a good job of retraining myself over the years, so I'm not so much of a planner anymore. Okay, you know who you are, you spend a ton of time, you've got a painting idea, you've got the supplies, you've used them before, you've swatched them, but you spend a ton of time researching possible color palettes, swatching out possible color palettes, doing sketches, doing mini paintings in your sketchbook, and you realize it's been a couple of weeks and you actually haven't executed or even started that painting idea that you had. All right, we've got the organizer, the swatcher, the collector, the planner. Head into comments, let us know which one you are. Or maybe you're two or three, or maybe you do all of them. Go ahead, let's get into it. So now that we know this, and that's half the battle, to recognize the kind of creative procrastination that we most often take part in. What do we do next? How do we fix it? How do we change it? Number one, if you're an organizer, here's the simple way to curb this habit. The new supplies come in, I want you to immediately, within 48 hours, go ahead and play around with the supplies. Swatch the colors, scratch around on paper, if it's a new pen or a pencil, whatever it is. And then go ahead and put it away. That's it. You put it away. You don't reorganize your entire cabinet to fit the new supplies. You don't, yeah, you know where I'm coming at. You just go ahead and put them away. Or better yet, leave them on the table messy and leave them on your painting table all a mess and just make some art with them the next time you sit down at the table. Literally force yourself not to get into a big loop of reorganizing everything when a new supply comes into your space. All right, if you're a swatcher, here's how you can change that habit and turn it into more of a productive art making habit, okay? So swatch your colors, but do this. Swatch them once. Don't come up with five ways to Sunday to swatch your colors. Swatch them once and promise yourself, store that swatch piece of paper somewhere and promise yourself that you're done with swatching that palette at least for you know, try this to change this habit for a couple of weeks, forcing yourself to limit your swatching. And if you feel the urge to swatch that palette again, instead of swatching, make some art with just that palette. The collector, remember, I am a big collector. For two months, three months, whatever duration you decide on, decide you are not going to purchase any new supplies until you have made a simple piece of art with everything you already have. This is a big one, and this is a tough one, especially when you are a collector through and through. It can be so hard, but it can be incredibly motivating because you know you want to buy the next cool thing, but you've promised yourself you're not going to buy anything new until you make some little bit of art with all the things you already have. All right, last but not least, we have the planner. If you're an over planner and if it prevents you from actually getting going on that artwork idea you have, here is what you can do. Promise yourself you're gonna limit yourself to two sketches, a pencil sketch and a color sketch with watercolor, and that's it. Once you've done those two, you move on to the real bit of art. That's it, that's all. Promise yourself that on the next idea you have and run with it and see how it changes you. Whew, I feel like I've thrown a lot at you today. I feel like so many of you are probably thinking, how did she get in my head? So if you need a little bit more creative mindset inspiration before you dive into your new habit building, I want you to go ahead and start watching this playlist about creative mindset habits and how to build and how to break them. Until next time, friends, I wish you happy painting.